Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Wisdom 365, Wisdom for Every Day of Our Lives. And today, the message is ready for action. Let us pray. Philippians 1.6 reads, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. My Father, thank you so much, my God, that the good work that you have begun, you will complete, my God. And that is a great promise because throughout our lifetime, you are constantly working in us and through us, my Father to make us better people, to grow us, to mature us, my Father, and to make us more into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, more in his likeness, my Father. With all of the different qualities and attributes, my Father, we can also lean into them and become them, become like Jesus. If the devil can get us to doubt God's power and goodness or his provision we will miss the wonder of God's goodness if the devil can get us to question our worth we will strive to prove ourselves and miss the gift of God's assurance and rest if the devil can get us to doubt God's timing we will rush ahead and miss the wisdom of his ways. We grow deep and wise when we trust you, God, fully and wholly. And the plan of action is spending more time with you, my Father, reading the word more, writing in our journals more about our feelings, about our thoughts, surrendering them more to you. The plan of action is to exercise our faith like we do our biceps. And exercising our faith requires, my Father, leaning into you, my God, spending time with you, my Father, speaking with you, my God, and putting the Word of God, your Word, that you wrote so beautifully and so lovingly, my Father, putting that word to work. Because we can read something and read it for a hundred years, but unless we apply that thing to our lives, it will not have any effect. It will not change us. It will not do anything except sit there on a shelf called Revelation, but if we don't adopt it for ourselves, then it will not amount to much. We know that God, that you, my Lord, you have a plan to redeem our story even when we make mistakes and even when we are in error. You are constantly in motion And you already have a plan to redeem our story. And we thank you, O God, because as we are learning to trust you fully, my Father, we are turning a deaf ear onto the enemy. The enemy of our soul does not want us to persevere, my Father. He does not want for us to be consistent because in the perseverance and the consistency, there lies victory. So the plan of action is to do it every single day, to do it without wavering, without doubting, my Father. Enthusiastics for the things of Christ. Enthusiasm is a great quality that we can have in the spiritual realm because it has to do with knowing you, with experiencing you, with speaking about our experiences with you to other people. Being enthusiastic is 
a great quality. It's having joy. It's being excited. It's being on fire. It's not that humdrum faith that never speaks or never testifies or never declares anything regarding Christ. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord, because we are meant to be Christians of the marketplace and not undercover Christians, my Father. And Lord God, we ask you that you help us in the action plan, that you help us to be able to carve out time to be disciplined in, in the times that we spent with you because we can include, we can have time as long as we manage our time to be able to have that quality time, which is love time with you, my Father. And Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, because I know that you know that we're not gonna get it right all the time. But Lord, we praise you, God, because my Father, Jesus will never get it wrong on our behalf. We can trust him and we can exhale, exhale our trust, our stress today and inhale trust, exhale stress, my God, knowing that you are on our side, that you guard us and that you guide us and that you keep us and sustain us and you will always provide Thank you that you see us. Thank you that you love us. Thank you, my Father, that we can trust in you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, my Father. Everything is perfect, even when we're not, my God. Everything is possible, even when we see impossibilities in front of us, O oh God. And it is so refreshing and so comforting to know that you see what we cannot see, my Father. And you take care of those things that we cannot even imagine, Father God, what you do for us on a daily basis. And Lord God, thank you so much, my Father, for this word. Thank you for helping us to be consistent, enthusiastic for the things of Christ, ready for action, my Father. Thank you so much. My friends, today we will be speaking about ready for action. And it's first, it's found in 1 Peter 1, 13 through 15. And it says, Therefore, get your minds ready for action, being self-disciplined, and set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And as obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance. But as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in all of your conduct. John Wesley, one of the elders of the church, advised... Catch on fire with enthusiasm and people will come from four miles to watch over you, to watch you burn. His words still ring true. And when we fan the flames of enthusiasm for Christ, our faith serves as a beacon to others. Our world de desperately needs faithful people who share the good news of Jesus with joyful exuberance. Be such a person. The world desperately needs your enthusiasm and your testimony now. We must go out and live among them, manifesting the gentle, loving spirit of our Lord. We need to make friends before we can hope to make converts. One of the greatest needs of the church today is for Christians to become enthusiastic about their faith in Jesus Christ. If you become excited about life, life will become an exciting adventure. 
So let us get ready for action. We're, get, we're going into a new year. And let us devise a plan. Not only New Year's resolutions, but a different mindset. A changed mindset is the fuel for the New Year's resolution to be able to keep it. Always keeping the why in front of you so that when you waver, when you're weak, when you don't want to do it anymore, you remember your why. And that is your conviction. The why is the conviction. And it will carry you through the tough times. And when you are wavering, because we are human and life sometimes gets in the way. But it's easier when you put something into place. You put a strategy, a goal, you make a decision, all of those things. When you sacrifice for 30 days and you do it every day, day in and day out, it will become easier on the 31st day and beyond. But you do have to sacrifice a little bit for those initial 30 days. The plan of action, get ready for action. And what is that? To become more spiritually mature, to become more self-disciplined. If you have to put the alarm clock for one hour before you need to wake up, do so and spend time with God and read the word and pray and journal in that hour. Give your day to God, command your day, command your blessings. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice in it and give the Lord those heavy laden burdens, those heavy laden thoughts that want to steer us away from faith and steer us away from giving them to God because they're heavy laden, their their thoughts and their issues and burdens and and weights that we are carrying on our shoulder that we are really not meant to carry, even though they are our issues and they are our problems, but when we surrender them to God, the weight is lighter. The weight is definitely lighter. And so we'll see God operating in our lives and our faith is growing and growing and, and our experiencing is growing exponentially because we are activating our faith. And so it's just like getting to know someone in a relationship, uh, a new friend, uh, a new uh, relationship. It's just getting to know one another as you start in this action plan, you will see God move in your life. So my friend, I speak blessings over you and I pray the Lord will bless you, bless your family, bless everything in your life. I pray that you are able to pray with freedom in whatever corner of the world you may be found. And I remind you, to play in the light and dance in the rain. But most of all, I remind you, remind you to keep on smiling. Until we meet again, have a beautiful, blessed day. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy. I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. 
Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy and yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.